Previously, we cover simple linear regression modeling with the Boston housing data. Now, we want to proceed now to the topic uh, of robust regression in this video. Uh, one of the rationale for moving away from simple linear regression is that uh, linear regression in its current form is heavily uh, impacted by the presence of outliers. Outliers can really uh, completely destroy the linear regression fit. So um, it's, it has a big impact on the estimated uh, coefficient. Uh, the coefficient could be intercept, it could be the slope as well, uh, but it doesn't matter. Basically, it actually uh, will be impacted heavily by outliers. Now, there are a lot of statistical tests that can be used to detect these outliers, typically uh, residual regressions, um, but we won't cover it here. And um, the primary reason is that uh, we can use uh, a different algorithm that I'm going to demonstrate here to actually uh, model your um, data uh, without, uh, in a simplistic or fairly uh, quick manner. One of the key things to remember is that uh, data science require an understanding of the domain and uh, that you are modeling in. So domain expertise is very important. As a result, outliers detection require a good understanding of the domain that they operate in. Okay, so uh, let me just demonstrate a little bit of how um, linear regression can be heavily impacted by outliers. I've given this link here and basically this is the applets that's provided by uh, this website. Um, I've simulated uh, 100 points as you can uh, observe here. Um, it shows the scatter plots which shows obviously the form you know it's fairly condensed here but it's also showed the direction and the actual strength of the relationship between the two quantitative variables, the x here and also the y here. So if we show the uh, mean x, y lines, that uh, then you know that it's actually basically here. So if we draw the least square line, that's basically the um, linear regression here and if we show the residual that's basically what it looks like now just wanted to show you uh, if i take a point like this just pay attention to the correlation coefficient here nine five six one and observe what happened to the line the blue line as well as the correlation coefficient so as i drag notice that the line starting to tilt the correlation coefficient is also tilting and this is just one single point can actually have such a major impact on the overall scheme of things so imagine if you have a few of these um, they will definitely make a major impact um, it went from earlier was 99 so let me just remove there it was uh, one two three it was about uh, I recall it's 80 something, I'm much higher than that, but A620, if I add three dots here, it drops down to 63. And that clearly shows you how um, how heavily uh, this whole thing is impacted by the uh, outliers. So that's the one thing to keep in mind of how severe uh, the linear regression can be impacted by outliers. So I encourage you to play with this. Uh, this link already uh, has already been uh, provided here. So convince yourself that um, linear regression uh, is heavily impacted and influenced by outliers. So just again, refresh our memory in terms of the information that we have. And we're going to go into random sample consensus algorithm. Uh, the link is also provided here uh, to the scikit-learn library. Uh, basically, what is RENSEC? The RENSEC uh, algorithm fits a model from random subsets of in inliers from the complete data sets. So instead of working with the whole data sets, it uh, automatically uh, sample 
and try to identify the outlier and exclude them from the actual modeling itself. So the algorithm itself, with each iteration, perform the following steps. It selects a random number of samples to be inlines and fit the model. Uh, so we need to actually set the minimum sample, uh, min, sam min samples here, uh, random samples from the original data and check whether the set of data is uh, also valid. And the second thing we need to do is fit a model to the random subset. Okay, so that's really the step one and step two here. And we also check whether the estimated model is valid or not. The third step then is to classify all data as inliers or outliers by calculating the residuals to be estimated model. And um, basically that estimated model is the best, uh, best the base estimator predict minus the actual observed value y and all data samples with absolute residual smaller than the residual threshold are considered as inliers. So basically when we were looking at this part here I'll show the residual so those let's just say we have a defined distance of roughly about one let's just say this is three then this will be considered as outlier and this is 1.5 so outlier outlier outlier. That's basically how uh, that is calculated. Okay, so, but you need to define the residual threshold yourself. Save, save the fitted model as the best model if the number of inlier samples is maximal. In case the current estimated model has the same number of inliers, it is only considered as the best model if it has better scores. Okay, so we are going to use um, average number of, or medium number of room as our uh, predictor uh, x again we need to reshape this uh, to uh, into a matrix format and the y here being our dependent is the median value so store that from scikit-learn we will import the ransack regressor instantiate the um, model and fit our data Notice we haven't defined any variables, we are just using the default numbers here. And from the Rensec inlier mask, we store them into the this variable. And from the uh, NumPy, logical not, anything that is not the inlier mask will be outlier. Right, the next thing is that we draw a line, a range tree from basically from 3 to 10 with a step of 1. And uh, we conduct our predict all right using the model that we fitted and what we're using is basically the uh, the numbers here from between the range of 3 to 10. all right so let me just show you what is this because in case you're not familiar with numpy and this is basically what it looks like so basically from 3 to 10 with a step of 1 but not uh, including 10. All right, so we fitted it and we basically have lin underscore y underscore renzek. Okay, so let's just plot it out and see what it actually looks like. Um, we're plotting the figure. We basically it's a scatter diagram. We are plotting both the inlier and also the outlier. The inlier liar will be in blue. The outlier will be in brown. We're also plotting our best fit line, uh, which is the this line here, lin x and lin y is what we estimated using the RANZAC, um, the line y, sorry. The color being red and the x label is the average number of rooms per dwelling and y label being the median value of owner-occupied homes in the thousands and um, store our legend descriptions to the upper left corner. And let's plot it out and see what this looks like. Okay, so what do you see here? You see the blue, okay, as denoted here, are the inliers. The brown, which are all of these dots here, are the outliers. And the red is our um, best fit line. Okay, now if we just take the model, Let's just add two line here. OK, 
Okay, and um, look at our coefficient. It's seven point two one. Let's uh, repeat the same. Again, estimated. And the intercept is minus 22. Let's uh, refresh our memory from previously. Um, what the numbers were, it was 9.1 and minus 34. And uh, clearly, that's actually quite different uh, from 7.2 is versus 9 point something, minus 30 something versus minus 22 something. Okay, that's really the end of this video on how to use uh, robust regression using specifically the RANSAC um, algorithm to perform this uh, algorithm uh, modeling. Um, for the remaining part of the video, uh, I'd like you to actually take a moment. Uh, instead of running it on RM and versus the median house prices, try it on the LSTAT, okay, the percentage of lower uh, income versus the uh, lower status of the population versus the median value and see what you get. So pause now, um, take a few moments and try this out uh, until you are familiar with the robust regression using RANSAC algorithm. Okay, how did you find that exercise? Um, I hope you actually tried out using the uh, else stat feature and uh, see what it looks like when you actually try to model it uh, to using the RANSAC uh, regressions. Now this is what I've done. Uh, let me change that to code. <coughs> and plot that out and just to visualize. All right, so let's just change this to upper right because that's where everything is okay looking at this what do you see so you have the brown are all the outliers the blue are the actual um, inliers and uh, that's really the purpose of that exercise to actually get you to fam be familiar with the uh, using ransack regression I hope really that you tried it out and you've got something similar and uh, just to summarize what we have learned here is that we've learned uh, first and foremost, that linear regression can be greatly affected by outliers. Number two, what we've learned here is the process of using the RANSAC regression. Now, the beauty is that because we are using the scikit-learn library, uh, you probably noticed by now that we just repeat the five steps, except that we are applying it using a slightly different um, model. Ultimately, the whole process is exactly the same. So now that you've learned it, you can actually apply this same set of um, skills and same set of uh, toolbox that you have right now. Uh, we will continue to increase the number of tools that is added into your toolbox and to allow you to you know, model uh, any situation or any data sets that you are working with. Having done all that, um, the next part now that we're going to go into is to evaluate uh, your model. Um, up to this point, uh, we've done a lot of um, modeling, but what we do not know is that which model is actually the best. Um, that's really the purpose of performance evaluation or evaluation of the model to compare and contrast the models that we've been, uh, uh, been using to actually tackle our data. And uh, the next part really is to evaluate the regression model from the different approaches and that's really a crucial, crucial part of building uh, a system for predictive modeling. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video.